Let's start right at the top because the number one pick, of course, is almost always the focus. And this time around, it's particularly intriguing because the Bears hold the number one pick. It's a quarterback heavy draft, as we'll get into, particularly in terms of top tier quarterback talent. And yet the Bears have their franchise quarterback, or do they? Because they'd be dealing, supposedly dealing Justin Fields to anyone that will listen. And it's added so many layers of intrigue. So, Ben, the Bears' decision in terms of what they do with Fields and the number one pick is pivotal to everything else that comes after. Yeah, usually at this at this point, we would we would have a very clear idea of what team at the top is going to do. Even if we even if we're sure that it's we don't know which there maybe there's two quarterbacks they're choosing between which one's it going to be, the Bears could still in theory not draft a quarterback. They could trade down and get a quarterback, or they could or they could decide okay we're we're going to have Caleb Williams and we're going to have Justin Fields, or maybe we're going to trade Justin Fields, we're going to take Caleb, or we're going to take Drake May, or we're going to take Jaden Daniels, and. Everyone else, especially those teams who are quarterback hungry, which is nearly half the league, are all there waiting to know what the Bears are going to do. Would there be a surprise on the day or will it be completely choreographed? Now, at the moment, I would say I'm 80 percent sure the Bears are going to draft Caleb Williams. I still don't know what they'll do with Justin Fields. It will depend on what the market is like for Justin Fields. But a team trading for Justin Fields that may then take them out of the quarterback equation it's all right usually so you I just want to domino, dive, dive yeah, in on this right the domino effect so yeah timing of course is intriguing and and again integral to to so many of the things we're going to get into over the coming weeks right but firstly most importantly are we going to see a scenario play out like draft day what <laughs> <laughs> where the Bears <laughs> on the morning of the draft decide what they no okay what so let's say they're going for Caleb Williams you're eighty percent sure that yeah. they're going to go for Caleb Williams more of that in a minute but let's assume that's right and they go for Caleb Williams do they deal deal Fields during the draft do they deal it what how does the market for Fields change do you think if if they're going for Caleb Williams and that pick is in. What, what? How do you see that playing out in terms of when they'll try and move fields? Well, my understanding is, is that the conversations that they were having in Indianapolis during the combine, and that's one of the most important things that happened during the combine. It's GMs and front offices talking to each other rather than seeing some people run around in their pants. The conversations they were having, I think what they found was that the market for Justin Fields wasn't as firm as they hoped it would be. Now, that may play into their decision making in terms of their their pick in the draft but it could also be that during that during the draft let's say the bears have taken caleb williams let's say the top three picks are all quarterbacks and let's say some quarterbacks are getting elevated above their station and getting picked earlier someone might panic and then they might want to make a move for justin fields right. during the draft okay. during that first round okay so what the bears do is key Let, let's let's get into this quarterback class because that is one of the, the fundamentals of this draft, of course. So Caleb Williams, the USC quarterback, expected to go one overall. Unless, if somebody trades up, are they trading up for Caleb Williams? If the Bears do, do go down that road and do a deal, because the three, well, let's frame the three quarterbacks. There's Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels for LSU, yep. and then Drake May from North yes. Carolina. Those are the big three that could go one, two, three, right? Yes. Um. I think if anyone if anyone's going to trade up with the, if anyone's going to do a deal with the Bears to take that number one slot, then surely they are going to take Caleb Williams because I think because it's so likely he's going to go first overall. If you're going to make that sort of package, and it will take a massive massive offer, I think it will be it will take something similar to or better than the 49ers gave the Dolphins to take Trey Lance, which obviously didn't work out. But they would they they offered three first round picks. It's going to take something like that. Caleb Williams is a, such a special player. He does absolutely everything. He's so improvisational. People want to make these Patrick Mahomes comparisons. It's important to remember that Patrick Mahomes in college, as good as he was, nobody thought he was going to be the player he is right now. So yeah. it's very easy to say to look at someone like Caleb Williams and say, 
he's better than Patrick Mahomes was at this point. Well, sure. But there were a lot of quarterbacks in college a lot better than Tom Brady was when he was in college. It doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be he's going to be better than Patrick Mahomes, but he's got that sort of skill set. There's there's things that people don't like about him. Like what? But like he cried after a, after a loss. He cried with his parents in the stands, and people were like, "This dude's soft." He, oh, he's that, I quite... mean, that uh, yeah, that story flew around. That that was as ridiculous as when Trevor Lawrence gave an interview and said, "Oh, there are things outside of football I quite like." And got, yeah, and got exactly. But this, but, but this is it. These these are the things that some people are because because he's got so many great physical skills. It's like, okay, what are his issues? Some people are like I don't like the fact he um he puts nail polish on, and genuinely. There is a narrative that some organizations might think, you know, is this, does he think he's like Dennis Rodman? And do we, yeah, do we feel that is, as I don't think that, that, no, those no, concerns, no, but, I'm with you, but, uh, but from an organizational point of view, I don't think in the 2024 NFL, that is nearly as big an issue as it would have been 10, 20 years ago, right? 20 years ago, that would take you off top spot. Mm. Like that, that's how the NFL would have viewed it. But the reason I'm saying these things is that when you get someone who has performed the way that Caleb Williams has performed, you've got to start looking for faults. And this is where they're going. Right. They're, they're, and they're, they're also going like, well, USC, they lost a lot of games last year. And they did. And if you look at those games, you could just look at the stats if you don't want to watch the games. And you'll, you'll, what will jump out at you is, did they even play with a defense? <laughs> like if they're giving up 50 sure. points a game... How much of that is on the quarterback? He okay, really so style of player, then, player. So he, improvisational, but then you've got Aaron Rodgers improvisational or Mahomes improvisational, right? Or uh, even in, in his heyday, Russell Wilson improvisational. And oh. we're get, we're maybe talk about him at some point with all of this as well. What, you know, I love asking me this when it comes to the college class. What quarterback does he remind you of the most? Who's he most like in terms of current NFL players? Or indeed, you know, NFL players from, yeah. from the last 20, 20 odd years. He's he's like a more muscular Patrick Mahomes, right? Basically, and I'm just talking the way that he plays. I'm not talking about ceiling. He plays like a Patrick Mahomes. His favorite player, his idol, is Aaron Rodgers. But mm. like you say, there are different types of improvisation, and his improvisation is more like a Patrick Mahomes. Gotcha. Okay, Jaden Daniels. Then, so if if Caleb Williams had a good individual season in a in different team, what kind of year? kind of form is Jaden Daniels in coming into the the NFL? He started, so the very first game of, of last season, um, the last college season, so much was expected of Jaden Daniels. And the big game was LSU against Florida State. And Florida State blew them off the field. And everyone was like, did. oh, exactly, exactly. Of course they did. And everybody was thinking, oh, well, maybe Jaden Daniels isn't, isn't the player that we thought. But he really started to come along. He became much more of a patient passer instead of trying to, instead of trying to force it. He runs the ball. Now, the thing is, before you even ask me of a comp, the comp again is Patrick Mahomes. Mm. Now, the thing that the thing that I read from um, from one unnamed, and it's good that it was unnamed, an unnamed NFL executive was what we see in him is Patrick Mahomes, but everything he's shown shows that he could be better than Patrick Mahomes. Now, Patrick Mahomes, there is an argument to be made that within a few years, we're going to say he's the greatest player of all time. So I'm not convinced that the second best quarterback in this draft is going to be better than the greatest quarterback of all time. Right. I do like Jaden Daniels, but he does not have as much tape as Caleb Williams. For me, he's like a, he's like a kind of a budget Caleb Williams. And okay. I do really like him a lot, but I think to me, I think there was a gap. Okay, there's a drop off. Well, that, that I want to get into that in a mo because there are. I, I, I said there were three quarterbacks. There's a fourth as well. If we're putting JJ McCarthy in the mix too, right? So Drake May out of the the defined big three, the big three quarterbacks that have been getting the buzz for for months and months and months at North Carolina, his stock seems to be falling more than in the same way that is that fair to say in terms of free draft buzz and Jane Daniels and indeed McCarthy seem to be getting, getting a bit more hype. So Drake may paint the picture for us for, for Drake may. And, and again, his status going into to this draft and the kind of player you think he's going to be. Drake may is someone who at one point he was like the prototypical quarterback, 
like in terms of kind of the, the body shape, his What's skill back set. Of it, six five. Yeah, yeah. He, exactly. He's arm. like, like if you were gonna like, I'm not, I'm not saying Drake May is the next Peyton Manning, but Peyton Manning was presented as well. This is if you were designing a quarterback, this is how you would want it. Right back then, and I feel he's a little bit, he's Old a school. little bit like that. Yeah, he is a really great passer of the ball. Um, he is a he is a true leader. The the problem for him in terms of kind of his stock falling a little bit is people are people are looking at he he would make some poor decisions sometimes, which a lot of them a lot of them do. Sometimes it's like he he's he's on his first read and he's determined to get it to him and he's not open and he's not open. He takes ages and he takes a sack or he throws mm-hmm. a pick or or whatever. But because if someone falls in terms of pre-draft stock, it's because someone is rising. And it was Jaden Daniels rising and to a certain extent, J.J. McCarthy. So Drake May, there was a lot of speculation a few weeks back. Maybe Drake May would go number one. Mm. And now nobody is talking about that. Why? Now it's, could Jaden Daniels be number one? I right. mean, I don't see it. Why? Why but... is May stock falling? Because um, it, because he's perceived as a bit of a kind of unreconstructed older school player in in the modern NFL. And, and particularly in contrast to, to the two you've just talked about. Yeah, to a certain extent it is that. But another thing is the, the ebb and flow of the pre-draft process mm. where... People were talking about Drake May so much that people got sick of Drake May. Mm-hmm. And it's like, who's what's the, what's the shiny new thing? We've not been talking about Jaden Daniels over the last few weeks. Mm. Let's hype up Jaden Daniels. So that's the media and that's the draft nicks and the, and the buzz and social and everything else. What about front offices? They're not getting drinking that Kool-Aid or are they? Do they do you think they get swayed a little bit by that? I don't think they get swayed by the media as such. I think it's that it all depends on how plugged in those draft nicks are. So it might be that they are speaking to GMs off the record yeah. and they are, they are painting a picture or whether it's, they're just kind of general impressions. You know, a lot of these guys, they don't name their sources, but they, they are speaking to these GMs. Now, obviously if you are a GM picking in the top three, you are not telling someone in the media, Oh, by the way, we're taking Drake May at two. And equally, if you're interested in moving in up there, you're going to be throwing all kinds of shade yeah. and smoke and mirrors in there. So you're yeah. going to always They're, take that with a pinch of salt, I think. That's a great that's a great point because there have always been there have always been talk of like the dark arts that happen behind the scenes, especially at the combine, where certain teams will start like off the record talking down certain players, like oh, we've got concerns about certain things. Right. And that spreads. It's like the Oscars. And there's then, like a lot of awards. I mean, there's so yeah. much politics behind the scenes at the Oscars. So if you think of like, let's say there's a player that you want who you, you don't think is going to fall to you, if you can start a rumor. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, it's it has happened. It is and I'm and I'm not I'm not saying that this was done deliberately, but if you look back at the famous 83 quarterback draft class and where Dan Marino was picked, sure, yeah, great example. It's yeah. because like on the eve of that draft, there were all these rumors. Oh, he's got a drug was, problem. Yeah. Exactly. Now, if let's 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 give the Dolphins credit here. I think it's unlikely, but let's say the Dolphins were like, "My God, Dan Marino is such a special talent. He's never going to fall to us unless." And you put those you put those rumors out. So there's always been there's always been speculation. I mean, look what so, happened to, to Bo Callahan. I mean, Bo <laughs> Callahan was was stitched up by, yeah. by Costner. Um, exactly, those things can happen. Poor Bo. Uh, a poor boat. Okay, all right. So, quick line on JJ McCarthy because he's the fourth. He's the fourth uh, Marx brother here, isn't he? The fourth, yeah, Beatle, I, or fifth well, Beatle. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm getting? Yeah, at. He I is, do. Um, I do. He's the guy that's kind of mm, feels like there's a drop. Maybe it's because it's Michigan as well, so he's getting a bit of extra hype there. He's the wild card, isn't he? There's talk that he could go lower first round, but there's talk that he might go top three. For some people. Yeah. So, what's going on with JJ McCarthy? So the thing with J.J. McCarthy is that um, when he was around at the Combine, a lot of teams who hadn't paid as much attention to him spoke to him, picked his brain, looked at what he could do, and were like, we like this guy more now. So because of the way that Michigan played, they relied a lot on defense, kind of smash-mouth running, and J.J. McCarthy only had to do a certain amount. Mm. So... It can be very easy to fall into the trap of thinking, oh, they, they're only asking him to do a certain amount because that's all that he can do, when often it's it's the game plan. 
So the more that they saw of him, the more they liked of him. Because although the tape doesn't lie, he doesn't perhaps have enough on tape that shows what he can do. Unlike the other three, where there are loads of passes, loads of splash plays. There's fewer from J.J. McCarthy. Mm. It will be interesting to see how he looks on his pro day, where he'll throw, he'll be throwing with his with his wide receivers. M- my gut feeling is, is that during the Michigan Pro Day, JJ McCarthy is going to wow some people. Now mm-hmm. it's kind of easy to wow people on a pro day, but he's got less on tape than the other guys have. So he's got more, more kind of more catching up to do. And he can do that because the others aren't going to do anything that makes us think, oh, I didn't know he could do that. We've already seen it. JJ McCarthy will end up throwing some absolute dimes during that pro day and someone is going to get very excited and i don't know if he's going to get overdrafted because of that right okay last one and then we'll look at the teams that are in the mix and indeed might be panic buying and and overdrafting are there any other quarterbacks that could conceivably go in the first round yeah bo nix um from oregon previously of auburn um He had such a patchy time at Auburn. He had so much was expected. And each year it was like, this is going to be his year. And it never was. And then he transferred to Oregon and was absolutely fantastic. He's really, really experienced. He's played so much in college. He was the most efficient quarterback in college football last year. His ceiling is not as high as the other guys. What is he? he Cousins kind of, kind of tight. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's a nice, that's a nice comparison actually. Okay. Um, And then, potentially if people go really panicking not because he's a bad player but because he's had he's had injuries michael Penix jr from mm. washington who um again he was a he was a transfer and then he came into this washington offense and was told to just air it out he has got such a strong arm but he's had two torn acls in his right knee he's had shoulder injuries on the non-throwing shoulder if it wasn't for those things he could be he could be day one, but he could also be day three. Mm. Like there could be if there's a run on quarterbacks, I wouldn't be shocked if Michael Penix Jr. can creep into that first round. 